Well, last week we got the first set of 12 spokes put in. As we all know, on these logging wheels, there's 24 spokes, so I have the next 12 to put in as well. Well, with the other 12 spokes in, it looks more like it should be as a finished wheel. Of course, I still have to put the outside rim and the fellies on. But you remember these bolts, I had two different sizes. The larger sizes were 0 .889, 885. Some of them were even 0 .9. And then the ones that were closer to 7 8 were closer to 7 8 0 .86 to 0.87. So I did go and order in a intermediate bit between 7 8 and 15 16 which is 29 32 
Well, decimally it's 0 0.906. So that's what I drilled the spokes out between the flanges. Well, I use my half inch Makita drill and you all know I have quite a few Makita tools. But this is the drill that I used for my 29 30 seconds drill. And it is a torque rascal. And as I was drilling through, it would catch on the wood and then catch on the steel going between the two flanges. And it would just beat the tar out of me. Every time it would catch, it would twist and kick and I'd hit the frame of my stand, I'd hit the C-clamps and it just beat my arm up. That's just how much torque this little Makita drill has. It's pretty impressive and it's kind of hard on you. So I do have a half inch drive electric Makita drill and it is a three-way reduction and it's got even more torque than this cordless one does. And I was actually pretty spooked to use it because it will chew you up and spit you out if you're not really careful. This little half inch drill was powerful enough for this project. Well, you're beginning to see the amount of dish that's in these wheels, and it's actually two opposing dishes, one facing this way and one facing this way. Well, it causes a fairly extreme angle in the spokes as they come out to the felly and then would be to the tire. So it's the dynamics of these two opposing dishes built in one wheel that made me think I wondered did I goof? Why do I say that? You remember when I put the taper on the end of these spokes, I mentioned that my spoke cone is marginal whether it is big enough. So I did these by hand on the sander. This is common procedure to cut a tenon on a spoke. When you put the cone on like this, then it allows for that to fit inside the tenon cutter or the tenon auger in order to begin to cut the tenon on the spoke. Common procedure in 99.9% .9 of wheels. This, however, might be that one-tenth of one percent that's different. So I'm not sure I can get this on camera enough to show you what I mean, but if you've been following with me long enough, I think you understand the angle of the tenon that is cut to the spoke. The tenons are not cut straight with the spoke. They're cut straight with the face of the dish as it heads from one spoke to the spoke that is 180 degrees on the other end. Now in this case, I've drawn a center on the hub, right in the middle of the hub, which if both spokes come in equal, same direction on both sides, this should be the center of the fellows and the center of the steel tire when they are all assembled. So if I measure between the inside of these two spokes, I have eight inches from the inside of the two opposing spokes. So half of that at this point here, I have four inches of dish already at the base of the spokes. Whereas on a buggy wheel, the amount of dish is usually about three-eighths of an inch. Wagon wheels might be a half to five-eighths, you know, within that range somewhere. We're already at four inches on this wheel. So in the case of wagon spokes, that in this case is two and a quarter out here and maybe inch and an eighth out on this end. When this tenon is cut straight with the dish and not straight with the spoke, you find that the shoulder where it is cut ends up being smaller on one side and larger on the back side because this tenon is not cut straight with the spoke. So we have a small side and a large side, which would be fairly normal for a wheel that has five eighths of an inch dish or half inch in that area. Well, when we're talking the dish that is to the degree on this wheel, this would be extremely offset by the time I cut this tenon four inches deep. So if I were to take that same approach and just put the pointer on like I did and cut my tenons, because of the amount of taper in these spokes, 
this amount of difference down at the shoulder of the spoke is going to be pretty extreme. And then these are going to be two spokes coming in in opposite sides. Uh, I have to have that tenon centered up at the shoulder where it stops, not centered up on the tip where it starts. And when I went back and looked at some old photographs that they sent me, there was a picture of a spoke at the shoulder where it shows that the spoke tenon is actually centered at the shoulder. Now, I don't know whether this was an inside, outside, right side, left side. I don't know what spoke it is, so I'm assuming it could be either one. They need to be same on both sides so that when these spokes come together at the fellows and at the tire, all of these tenons are centered on the spokes, and which is going to line the spokes up. So now I have to decide where does the tip of the tenon start so that it ends up centered where it shoulders up and stops. So I found the diameter of the center of the hub and that diameter is seven and three eighths. So how do I find what the length of my spokes need to be? Our wheel is going to be 120 inches. So I'm going to subtract the seven and three eighths from that and then divide that in half. And I'm going to come up with 56 and 5 16 length to my end of my spoke from the outside center of the hub. So one of the things I did is I made me a stick that is the same length from the center of the hub to the end of the spokes. And this is inch and three quarter wide, just the same width as what the tenon is going to be when I actually cut it on the spoke. So on the end of the stick that I have that's inch and three quarter, I put a mark right in the center. This is going to be the center of the tenon on the spoke. And that's going to go right to the center of the hub. So now if I want to find where is the center of the tenon on the end of the spoke, I'm going to move my straight edge to the center of the hub. So if this is going to be the shoulder of the tenon on the spoke, this is going to correlate to this area right on the spoke itself. And this bevel, which is three quarters of an inch, if I go to the center of that bevel, that's going to be the center of that tenon. Now, since I have the edge of my board to the center of the hub, I can put the edge of my board to the center of my spoke, and I can find out exactly where that tenon is going to be and at what angle at the center. And just draw that line out as best I can. That now becomes the center of the tenon not over here, but over here, to make this tenon go straight to the center of the hub. So since my tenon is going to be an inch and three quarter, half of that is going to be seven eighths. So this would be approximately the outside edge of the tenon on both sides. I can hold this straight here. That would be about the outside width of the tenon. So if I do the same down on this end and figure out where the edge of my tenon is going to be, and get kind of a pretty good feel of the angle of that tenon. What I need to do now is taper this side back so that this now becomes the center of my spoke tenon to where if I start there, when I come down to this point, that tenon is going to be centered up on the spoke where it needs to be. So the benefit of having made my spokes a little extra long, they're a quarter inch long, I'm actually going to trim those off right about in that area there which will allow me enough room to trim this off and retaper my cone to the side where it needs to be in order to line that tenon up where it needs to be. So I'm going to have to take some more shoulder off of here. This one will be just about right. I might increase the taper here just a little bit just to remove material. But this whole process is to move the center of the tenon over about a half of an inch to where it needs to be 
so that this tannin goes to the center of the hub. And, and this same effect will be done on both spokes. It'll be just offset the opposite direction on the opposing spoke as it is on this first spoke that I drew out. So did I goof up? I kind of did, but it's not so extreme that it's not fixable mainly because I cut my spokes a quarter of an inch long so I can trim that back, make that adjustment so that when both spokes come in from opposing angles, those tenons are gonna line up in line with each other, which will be in line with the set of fellies and the tire as it comes around. So the spokes are gonna come in like this, but the tenons are gonna line up and that'll head straight to the center of this wheel. So this wheel, in essence, has about four and seven eighths inch, roughly, dish, opposing dishes built into this wheel, which is part of what makes this wheel such an extremely strong wheel. So you all know from the past videos that I use 60 grit discs on my seven inch hand grinder. And I'll just take that and take off the proud side and kind of make these angles fit so I can adjust the position of these tenons. It'll work. It's just a little bump in the road. So once I do all this, then the challenge now is to take this vertical wheel and I need to turn it horizontal to put it on my stand so I can actually cut those tenons and live to tell about it. We'll see how that goes. Appreciate you following along. Thanks for watching. <laughs>